The structure and function of blood vessels is the topic of the screencast. You may find information on this topic in Chapter 11 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to achieve the following objectives. Compare and contrast the anatomy of arteries, capillaries, and veins. Compare the compliance and elastance of arteries and veins. Describe the process of vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Describe the functions of elastic and muscular arteries. Define the function of arterioles. Describe the function of capillaries. Explain how the cardiovascular system directs blood to specific organs and tissues. And lastly, describe the three mechanisms or structures which help move blood through veins. We have discussed the cardio portion of the cardiovascular system, which of course is the heart. Now we turn our attention to the vascular portion, which are all of the blood vessels. A blood vessel consists of various layers of tissue surrounding a space called a lumen. And the layers of tissue surrounding the space is referred to as the wall of the blood vessel. The function of blood vessels is to allow blood to flow from the heart to the lungs and other tissues of the body and then to be returned to the heart. Remember that the cardiovascular system is a closed system. Blood flows from high pressure to low pressure and the pressure gradient is established by the heart which causes blood to flow through blood vessels. As blood flows through blood vessels, friction between the blood and the walls of the blood vessels offers resistance to blood flow. And in a previous screencast, you learned this to be called peripheral resistance. Viscosity, the length of a blood vessel, and the diameter of a blood vessel all affect peripheral resistance. As the viscosity or thickness of the blood increases, peripheral resistance increases. Also, as the length of the blood vessel increases, that will also increase peripheral resistance. And lastly, as the diameter of a blood vessel increases, there is less resistance to blood flow. So diameter, increasing diameter, decreases peripheral resistance. The relationship between blood flow, pressure, and resistance is given by the following equation. As pressure increases, blood flow increases. As resistance increases, blood flow decreases. Now let's talk about two properties of blood vessels which are important to understand. One is the property of compliance. Compliance is the ease at which blood vessels stretch in response to an increase in blood pressure. Elastance is the tendency of a blood vessel to recoil towards original dimensions or its original shape and size as blood pressure falls. I would like to demonstrate these two properties using the same example that your book does, which is an old and new pair of socks. So when you put a new pair of socks on, they fit nice and snugly, and when you take them off, they return to their original shape and size. This is because they are low in compliance, they don't give very much, that's why they fit so snugly, and they are high in elastance, which causes them to return to their original dimensions when you take the socks off. Now what happens to a, a pair of socks after you have worn them over a period of months? Well, they become stretched out. They don't fit as snugly anymore. They increase in compliance. And then when you take them off, they're sort of flabby. They don't recoil to their original shape and size. So they lose their elastins. Arteries are low in compliance. They don't tend to give very much in response to an increase in pressure, but they are very high in elastance. They recoil very effectively. Veins, in contrast, are very high in compliance, but they're low in elastance. So arteries are like those new pairs of socks. Veins are like uh, those old pairs of socks. 
Now let's begin to look at the different blood vessels, their structures, and their functions. Blood flows from the heart to the capillaries through blood vessels called arteries. These arteries branch into greater and greater numbers of smaller arteries as they approach the capillaries. Blood passes through the arterioles, the smallest of the arteries, prior to entering the capillaries. Blood is carried back to the heart through blood vessels called veins. Blood leaves the capillaries through venules, the smallest of the veins. Veins merge into smaller numbers of larger veins as they approach the heart. So the function of the arteries is to move blood to the capillaries and the function of the veins is to return blood to the heart. The function of the capillaries is to allow the exchange of substances between the blood in the capillaries and the tissues. Let's look now at the anatomy of these blood vessels which reflect their different functions. The walls of arteries and veins consist of three layers or tunics starting on the lumen side of the blood vessel wall is the tunica interna or tunica intima. It is composed of a single layer of simple squamous epithelial cells which is called the endothelium and a supporting basement membrane. It is smooth and minimizes resistance to blood flow. Deep to the tunica interna is the tunica media. It is composed mainly of smooth muscles with some elastic fibers mixed in. It is the elastic fibers which gives the blood vessels its elastance. Lastly, the most external layer or tunic is the tunica externa. The tunica externa consists of collagen and some elastic fibers contributing to the elastance of the blood vessel. The collagen helps support and protect the blood vessel. Capillaries do not contain the tunica media or externa. They consist only of the tunica interna, the thin layer of simple squamous epithelial cells with a supporting basement membrane. The walls of an artery are thick and rubbery to support and accommodate rapid high pressure flow of blood coming from the heart. As large arteries branch into smaller arteries and eventually into arterioles, the tunica media and externa become thinner and thinner. As the arterioles give rise to the capillaries, the tunica externa and media disappear completely, leaving only the tunica interna, making up the walls of the capillary. As venules branch from the capillaries, venules have basically the same structure as arterioles, except they have a thinner tunica media with fewer smooth muscles as the venules merge and form larger veins, the tunica externa thickens and is thicker in fat compared to the tunica externa of arteries. However, veins have a thinner tunica media with fewer smooth muscles and fewer elastic fibers. For this reason, veins Overall, have a thinner, more flabby wall compared to arteries. Veins also have a larger lumen to accommodate a larger supply of blood. About 65% of blood volume is found in the veins at all times. Blood pressure in the veins is very low in comparison to blood pressure in the arteries. Therefore, veins, unlike the arteries, contain valves, which ensure that blood moves in one direction and one direction only toward the heart. 
This figure shows an actual artery beside a vein. Notice that the wall of the artery is much thicker than the wall of the vein. This is due specifically to the thicker tunica media with more smooth muscles and more elastic fibers compared to the vein. Notice that the vein has a much larger lumen to accommodate a greater volume of blood. The cardiovascular system shifts blood from one part of the body to another part of the body based on need. If you engage a strenuous exercise, the cardiovascular system is going to shift more blood toward your skeletal muscles. If, on the other hand, you sit down and have lunch, your cardiovascular system will shift blood toward your digestive tract to facilitate digestion and absorption. And how does it do this? Well, it changes the size of the lumen of your blood vessels by altering the contraction of the smooth muscles of the tunica media. Now smooth muscle contraction in blood vessels is under the control of the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic division. Vasoconstriction results from the contraction of smooth muscles which decreases the size of the lumen and increases resistance to blood flow. Vasodilation is the opposite Smooth muscles relax. This increases the size of the lumen, and then there is a decrease in resistance to blood flow. Blood follows the path of least resistance, so vasoconstriction of blood vessels in one part of the body will shift blood to other blood vessels in other parts of the body that offer less resistance. I want to add that there is always an amount of smooth muscle contraction or what is called vasomotor tone in our blood vessels in order to maintain blood pressure. This figure from your book illustrates vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Vasodilation is shown on the left. Smooth muscles relax. This enlarges the lumen and there is less resistance to blood flow. Vasoconstriction shown on the right results from smooth muscle contraction. As the smooth muscles contract, lumen size is reduced and there is an increase in resistance to blood flow. Arteries can be classified as two basic types. The elastic arteries are the large arteries that receive blood directly from the ventricles, the pulmonary trunk and its branches, the aorta and its branches. These arteries have a very high elastic tissue content. This allows them to expand during ventricular systole as the ventricles contract and to then recoil during during ventricular diastole as the ventricles relax. This allows the elastic arteries to maintain blood pressure throughout a complete cardiac cycle. Medium-sized arteries branch from the elastic arteries and they're called muscular arteries because they have a much thicker layer of smooth muscle tissue in their walls. This gives them a very large capacity to alter blood distribution by vasodilation or vasoconstriction. Muscular arteries can alter blood flow in response to metabolic needs. For example, if one begins to exercise where skeletal muscles are now consuming a large amount of glucose, and producing a large amount of carbon dioxide and organic acids, which drops the pH around and in the skeletal muscles. These changes in oxygen, carbon dioxide, and pH causes relaxation of the smooth muscles in the supplying muscular arteries. The result is an increase in blood flow to those metabolically active organs that need oxygen and nutrients the most. Arterioles are the smallest of the arteries and they provide blood flow directly to the capillaries. Because they are so small, they are a major site of resistance to blood flow in the vascular system. They have the ability to alter blood flow through vasodilation and vasoconstriction in response to changes in metabolic need as described previously. 
in response to infection or injury. Tissues release certain substances. These substances cause the relaxation of the smooth muscles in the walls of nearby arterioles, causing vasodilation and an increase of blood flow to the area of injury or infection. This results in the redness and swelling or edema that is so characteristic of a typical inflammatory response. Capillaries link arterial circulation with venous circulation, with the exception of epithelial tissues and a few other structures such as joint cartilage, the cornea, and lens of the eyes. All tissues have capillaries. The density of capillaries in a tissue or an organ is directly proportional to the metabolic rate of said tissues. For example, skeletal muscles, kidneys, the liver, the brain have very high metabolic rates and therefore have large densities of capillaries. Other structures with a low metabolic rate, such as tendons and ligaments, have a very low density of capillaries. Capillaries branch to form capillary beds. During low metabolic activity, sphincter muscles can restrict blood flow to the meta-arteriole, sometimes referred to as a vascular shunt, and blood can flow directly from arteriole to venule. During times of high metabolic activity, the sphincters are relaxed and blood flows through the entire capillary bed. So the cardiovascular system can increase or decrease flow of blood to a particular tissue by vasoconstriction or vasodilation of muscular arteries and arterioles or by the contraction or relaxation of sphincter muscles within capillary beds. Now that we have discussed arteries and capillaries, now let's discuss the last blood vessel, which are the veins. So veins contain about 65% of the total blood that is in your cardiovascular system. The pressure gradient in veins is very low. So the veins have several mechanisms to help move blood back toward the heart. These mechanisms include valves, the skeletal muscle pump, and a respiratory pump. The skeletal muscle pump is one mechanism that helps blood flow through the veins back toward the heart. The massaging action of contracting skeletal muscles in the limbs squeeze large veins and move blood through open valves toward the heart. Valves close to prevent blood from flowing away from the heart when skeletal muscles are relaxed. The mechanics of breathing creates a pressure gradient between the abdominal cavity and the thoracic cavity, which helps move blood through veins back to the heart. So as you inhale, the thoracic cavity expands, therefore volume in the cavity expands or increases, and this decreases pressure in the thoracic cavity. Meanwhile, the diaphragm descends, decreasing volume of the abdominal cavity and increasing pressure in the abdominal cavity. Therefore, blood moves from high pressure veins in the abdomen toward the lower pressure inferior vena cava in the thoracic cavity. Thus, this respiratory pump helps move blood from the inferior portions of the body to the inferior vena cava back toward the heart. Now let's review the objectives of this screencast. Compare and contrast the anatomy of arteries, capillaries, and veins. Compare the compliance and elastance of arteries and veins. Describe the process of vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Describe the functions of elastic and muscular arteries. Define the function of arterioles. Describe the function of capillaries. Explain how the cardiovascular system directs blood to specific organs and tissues. And lastly, describe the three mechanisms or structures which help move blood through veins.
erythrocytes is the subject of the next screencast.